Welcome back to Your Source TV. I'm Tamara Stutchlack, and with us is Laurie Nakamoto and her adorable dog, Miss Latte. And we're going to talk about your uh, travels and the innovative things that you did with students in, in Sweden. And then we're going to talk more about your social work and your work in nursing homes um, with, with your dog and that innovative work that you've been doing for many, many years. Thank you. Well, after I was in the field of social work for a while, I attended a study program in Sweden where there was exchange students, exchange practitioners, and we stayed with different families, three different families during our stay, and learned about services for people in the area that we were specialized in. So I did all long-term care places that served older people in Sweden. and because I was hosted by local social workers. I also was a host to a lot of them who came to the United States and to the Washington area where they were studying different agencies and learning more about their fields as they got into. So that was exciting to do that. And what did those students learn during their, their time with you in, here in D.C.? Well, they learned about American homes, for one thing, by staying in an American home, but then they visited agencies that served the populations that they worked with from their country. So I had Germans, I had uh, people from Eastern Europe, uh, all different countries. Did, did you learn about different techniques or focus areas in social work that were different in different countries? Well, we did, and what we learned when I was in Sweden very early in my career is that actually the Swedish social workers were using American books on social work. Now they did have the walkers with rollers way before we did and it was interesting to see how they served their elderly and then when I traveled a lot I always tried to go to retirement homes and later in my life when I was traveling not as a poor student but one that had means to travel comfortably I went to many retirement homes in Japan and I was always taken by in the dining rooms they would have a series of sinks and everyone washed their hands before they went into the dining room. We should do that in America. And so what, what early beliefs that, that were formed and, and were part of your early life uh, and these remarkable older people that were your, your mentors, mm -hmm. how did you bring that into social work and then do some very innovative things in the, the world of social work that really was bringing in all of your passions, including uh, art, art history, and uh, also at some point tell us about how you've incorporated massage therapy and, and being a licensed skin skincare professional. I've been so fortunate that I've been able to integrate my dogs in social work from the very beginning. I started taking my dog to my first job where I stayed for 18 years and everybody knew I always had a schnauzer and one of my dogs had a chair and she was always in my office and went around with them and then as the years went on I began to do more consulting in nursing homes, working more with the social workers, doing more PRN and more art programs, art program that would bring reminiscence and working with frail elderly. Do uh, social workers normally add in art history or it's your unique, your unique slant because of your I skills? I think that was what I chose to do. I was able to integrate my passion, which is right. art history, living in the best city in the world for that, and then bringing my art to the residents and integrating with my social work skills and getting them to reminisce, look at the art, be part of the art, and my dog, and now dogs, because in recent years I've always had three, so they all come with me. People expect that I bring my dogs, and if I walk into a nursing home where I go often and I don't have a dog, residents will say to me, where are your dogs? Or staff that I don't even know will say, where are the dogs? People just know I bring my dogs when I go you to work. you have a memorable story? Well, one is very special in that I had an elderly lady in assisted living. I went once a month to do a program. And I, got, I arrived and the activities director was setting up for us and she said, oh, Mrs. Smith has been waiting all day for you. Of course, she, she went of the drawing points as I brought my dogs that she could hold. And she corrected this woman. She said, oh, no, you're wrong. She said, I've been waiting all month for her to come back. So what distinctions do you make about the love therapy that pets bring in those settings that you've experienced? It's just a wonderful way to nurture the elderly. The dogs are nurtured. They have a purpose. The elderly ladies and men, but mainly women, of course, majority who live there, 
if they had pets in their lives, they usually don't have them now, and they don't get a lot of touch. They don't get to hug. They don't get to caress skin and, and just be loved and loved by the dogs, you know, them giving them the hugs and, and the dog being just totally comfortable in their laps. So it's a way to nurture them even more, and I think that's what I love about the elderly, that you can nurture them, you can still touch them, unlike teachers who can't touch the kids. And so much of my work is touch with them, hugging, re reinforcing them, giving them little pads of reinsurance, and the dogs do that. So you were sharing, you know, pets early on as an innovator. How did that occur, occur to you and you were allowed to do it? I really don't know other than I just started doing it and it just became part of my work role and then people expected it. And now the animals are so important with people, but especially the elderly, it's a very easy component that I can integrate the dogs into my work. So what of your life's philosophy would you want to share that uh, that you found along your journey that perhaps uh, our viewers might take away as uh, some inspiration or the way that you've integrated your passions? I think that my memo on my life is, life uh, is something I dabble at and it works for me because I do so many things and I see layers of life. I don't think we have to do one thing. Some people do and they're great at it. I'm much better moving. I get energy from movement. I get energy from integrating people, my jobs, overlapping them. I'm not a person that goes to bed at night and says, oh, I can't meet you tomorrow because I've got to go to work or I can't do something in the afternoon because I feel every day is a special day and it doesn't matter what's on the agenda tomorrow. There's still time to do things and I never have work tomorrow as keeping me from doing something tonight. And I think just, just the passion of having so many choices in a city like ours, in our country, we have so many choices to be as many people as we want to be and as many specialties and and the best thing to do is if you can integrate them you integrate your friends your services and everything is intertwined how would you encourage people to maybe that haven't pursued a number of of their interests how would you encourage them to start i think just really listening to what your spirit tells you and if it's something that you want to do and if it's something that's acceptable wonderful, but if it's something that's new, but it works for you, then that's what we need to do. And we're in a, you, the artwork tells us that. There's nothing that it's a norm anymore in the art world when you think of cutting edge art, the very current art divisions. And it's like going to the Kennedy Center. Someone has sequins and a beautiful fur coat. The next person has jeans that have holes in them. It's whatever works for you, and you have to follow your passion and be passionate about something. It may change. It may expand. I mean, I have so many interests, I don't have time for them. But if I can get a touch of them, a flavor of them, and then you get all the people that you connect to the next experience, it's something that it's hard to pass up. Is there a golden nugget that you receive from, from some of your early mentors that you'd want to share? I guess there's so many special people in my life, and I think the overall one is go for it. One of my- Go local, for it. Go for it. Yeah, and I have a, a very dear girlfriend who's an artist and she's always telling me, go do this, go do that, as far as something to do with art history or when I joined one of the new museums, I wasn't sure I would want to be part of it. She says, absolutely, go down there, do it. And when I got my 30-year pin, I called her up and I said, you know, it's because of you that I have this 30-year pin. You're the one who prompted me, said, go ahead, try this. And I love to be around people who are positive, passionate, and just encouraging to do the good things in life. So what would Miss Latte tell us today? I think she'd say I love to be with people. <laughs> I love to be with other dogs. I, I started taking care of a lot of my girlfriend's dogs recently when they go away. They don't want to put them in a vet or pet hotel. And my dogs, because they're so used to being out with me, with other dogs, with other people, that any one of my friends knows if they have a dog, they bring them when they come to my house. And my dogs just accept everyone. And I think it's because I start when they're puppies. They don't know anything else. It's just like my dog's treats are green beans and carrots. And other dogs come to our house and they put their nose up. But they start from a good surrounding and a good 
balances as far as the baseboard. And I think it's, if you create your own life and you decide what's going to work and people look at you and say, well, you can't do that, why not? If it works for me, if it works for you, that's what we have to follow, and it generally works. So we're, we're coming to a close. Are there, are there some thoughts or a, a story, something from your world travels that were, were very numerous that you'd want to share with us that just maybe you know, tells us about how you've been an innovator or, or something that really touched you? Well, I think just the having the opportunities I've had and realize we're so lucky as Americans to have the freedoms and the choices Money gives you choices, but a country and heritage gives you choices in wow. what it is you can pursue. And I feel so fortunate to have traveled. I'm still interested in traveling the world, going to new cultures, learning Where about Where haven't people. you been to yet and why? I haven't been to the interior of Africa. I haven't been to all of Asia. I've been to most of, all of Western Europe, a little bit of Eastern. Do you have a favorite place in the world? Is that possible? It's hard to say, that's a hard question, because food and people and events and what you did in the country at the time are what make everything exciting. But being now in a lot of women's groups locally where people come from all over the world, just sharing and learning about who we are and becoming more of what we are when we meet people, whether we're traveling or having the opportunity to be the hostess and having people come to our homes and joining local clubs where we have so many internationals that you become more of an American by knowing them. So maybe just a final mm -hmm. uh, short thought on, um, you have a, a, a strong passion for, for women. Um, any comments on that? Well, I have a passion for little animals, for women friends. I do collect women in art. That's my collection, whether it's my statues, sculptures, mm -hmm. yes. sculptures paintings from all different artists, lot, many of whom I know. I, I try to support my local artist friends as much as Beautiful. I can. Beautiful. But, so any further thoughts on, as a social worker, massage therapist, and the healing arts, um, any words of wisdom that you would give to people about this um, the passions in, in your life that are, are part of health and well-being? I think creating the kind of world and environment we want to. I choose very loving, kind, gentle friends, and I make a point of avoiding those that don't have that. And I think by f surrounding ourselves with warm and caring people and then having ways that you can reach out through social work, whether it's massage, whether it's just having an environment when you have your friends in that they feel welcomed and that we all can bring the best out of each other is the best we can do in life. Absolutely beautiful. And thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this segment of Your Source TV. Join us again.